beloved in Christ, I welcome you to this Palm Sunday service in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Behold the Lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. The hymn is 252 of the Methodist Hymn Book. sisters in Christ, indeed, God is with us. During the Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of the Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we begin this solemn celebration in union with Christians throughout the world when our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem in triumph to complete his work of salvation for humankind. He was rejected. He suffered, died, and was raised from the dead. For this, we celebrate our victorious Christ. Let us pray. God, our Savior, whose Son Jesus Christ entered as a Messiah to suffer and die, we come before you recognizing your love and your grace that is sufficient to redeem us. Our Lord Jesus, who on this day entered the rebellious city where he died, we pray that he enter into our hearts and subdue us to his reign. Make us meek and lonely. And as your faithful disciples, God grant us grace to spread our garments on the way. So make us ready to lay at your feet all we have and all we are, and to bless you who comes in the name of the Lord. Grant that after we have confessed and worshipped you on earth, we may be counted among the number of those who at last shall hail your triumph entry eternally and bear in their hands the palms of victory when every knee shall bow before you and every tongue shall confess that you are the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved humankind, grant that by faith in him we who suffer under your cross may also receive victory in the power of his spirit 
Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer, in giving thanks to God, and confessing our sins before him. Let us, in the silence of our hearts, give thanks to God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his kindness, and above all, the work of redemption in Christ Jesus. Let us confess our sins to him, recognizing that he is faithful and we are unfaithful. For our sins, he died. For our iniquities, he suffered. We continue to crucify him daily in our lives. Let us pray for forgiveness and ask his mercy. Almighty God, we offer unto you a sacrifice of praise and we give you thanks for your mercy to us and all peoples for the blessing of your infinite grace. We magnify your name for your unspeakable gift in Jesus Christ, your Son, and for your purpose of love towards men, which has given us life to the full. We praise you especially this day for the faithfulness with which he trod the way of suffering, for his gentleness on the provocation, his patience on the affliction, his meekness in both honor and contempt. We will forever praise you, our God, for your love and mercy. We pray that we may find in his triumphal march towards the rebellious city, a confrontation against our sins, and may we realize a pageant of our hearts of all unholy habits, and to the end that our hearts shall be clean and fit for your dwelling. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer and pray for the church universal. Let us pray that God in his mercy will strengthen the church in her witness, especially on this day and on this season, as we celebrate our Lord Jesus' entry to Jerusalem, his suffering, his death, and resurrection. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will fall on the church. And in witnessing to this, the world will know and come to believe in God's love. Let's continue in prayer and pray for our own church, the Methodist Church, Ghana. As a church in Ghana, witnessing to God's saving grace, let us pray that God in his power will strengthen us to do so. People of God, I ask you to pray for the leadership of our church in Ghana. Pray for the connectional leadership, the presiding bishop, and the other executive members serving the church. Let us pray for our diocese, our bishops, and pray for all the circuits and ministers in the circuits. Let us ask God's favor upon his people that he will uphold his ministers with righteousness and the humility to serve. Father, we pray that in your mercy you uphold your church in the power of the Holy Spirit to witness to the world your redemptive act in Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that the leadership of the church in following Jesus will live in humility and to serve the world. We ask that your mercy will be upon all our ministers. Uphold them in your righteousness 
endow them with the grace of holiness that in holiness they will serve you and serve the people of God to the praise and the glory of your name. Grant your church the boldness to declare your word in time like this, standing for the truth and the faithfulness of the gospel. Amen. Let us at this time, on this very occasion, pray for children of the world. Remembering that for them, Christ came to redeem. As he, Jesus says, for this is the kingdom of heaven. We pray that children of the world will be at peace. Children of the world will come to know the joy of the Lord in their lives. Let us humbly pray for children who are suffering in diverse ways. Let us ask God to defend and to keep them. And finally, I invite you to submit your prayers and your petitions to God. Jesus came to save the world. He loves us. He cares for us. Trust in him and pour out your heart to him. And now, almighty God, you have given us grace at this time to meet together and make our common intercessions and supplications to you. And have promised that where two or three are gathered together in your name, even in distance, you will grant thee our request. For fear now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be profitable for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. We sing the hymn 247 of the Methodist hymn book. shall come and take his servants up to their eternal home. The last scripture reading 
is from Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4 through to 9. Isaiah 50, 4 through to 9. Let's hear the word of God. The Lord has given me the fang of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not my back. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have not set my face. Therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let's stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, of all of them will wear out like a garment. The month will eat them up. The word of God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. We read verse 1 through to 11. Matthew 21, verse 1 through to 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tired and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophets, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them their clothes and sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is a prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the hymn 152 of the Methodist Hymn Book.
all ye heavy laden, come. Here is pardon, comfort, rest, and hope. You wanderers from the Father's face, retain, accept his preferred grace. Jesus of Nazareth, pass it by. friends I speak to you in the name of God the Father the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen let me start by asking you a simple question can you imagine can you imagine in our present COVID-19 lockdown if it is announced that Jesus is in your neighborhood and on his way to one of the main cathedrals in Accra or a cathedral close to you, how would people, especially Ghanaians, react? How would you react? Just imagine the situation. Today we celebrate this special Christian festival the Palm Sunday of Jesus' triumphal entry to G Jerusalem in a way that majority of us in our generation had never done before. Globally, many countries are locked down because of COVID-19, and there are no physical community church services to mark the day. Christians in Ghana are experiencing the same and I believe you miss the celebration as we come together to celebrate Jesus. Unfortunately, within the same time, we are also experiencing strange theological interpretations and meanings to the pandemic. I ask you to be watchful of the rise of false teachings and biblical interpretations which are not consistent with our understanding of God's nature of love and his self-revelation to us in the scriptures. I implore you, just be watchful. Keep the faith for the God we know have come to us in Christ still comes to us. He's the same yesterday, today, and he will be the same forever. The Passover festival is fast approaching, and many Jews and devout men and women had traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Jesus, a renowned rabbi or a teacher and a Jew, decided to go to Jerusalem for the festival, a journey which became his last visit to Jerusalem during his three-year earthly ministry. This journey for Jesus was more than a religious pilgrimage. On his way, he called his disciples and said to them, what is our test for today? Mark chapter 3, chapter 10, verse 33 to 34. See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priest and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then he will hand, be handed over to the Gentiles. 
they will mock him and spit upon him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. Jesus' final entry to Jerusalem was an event recorded by the four Gospels, and in each, the evangelists alluded to its a unique theological focus or dimension. But I would like to stick to Matthew, the Gospel readings for us today. Matthew, in presenting his version of the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, showed great interest in the royalty of Jesus. Matthew begins his narrative in Matthew 1.1 1, 1 by saying, this is an account of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus, for Matthew, is a son of David and the king of the Jews, whose birth erupted fears in King Herod, resulting in the evil massacre of children in Bethany and Bethlehem of Judea by Herod. In the same way, Matthew presented Jesus as the Messiah King on his way to Jerusalem. He is Zion's King who comes in humility riding on the donkey. He is the one who the crowd shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This Jesus is the one who received the praises of the people and that stirred the city who asked, who is this man? Then the followers answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Beloved in Christ, Matthew, the gospel writer, and the followers then saw Jesus as a prophet king who rides on to Jerusalem in majesty and in victory. The hymn is apt on this. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fears. Dear name, the rock on which I built, my shield and hiding place, my never failing treasury, filled with boundless stores of grace. And now listen. The hymn says, Jesus, my shepherd, brother, friend, my prophet, priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, my God, Accept the praise I bring, the hymn 99. May I dare ask you now, who is Christ to you? Is he your prophet, Cain? Is he your priest and shepherd? Beloved in Jesus Christ, Jesus' triumphant entry as we celebrate today brings to us some meanings to life and a strength to our faith. I will associate with the school of Matthew and the good news that there is indeed a prophet king in town. He comes into our cities. He comes to our villages. Jesus, the Lord who rode on the donkey to Jerusalem is still the king not only of the Jews, but of the entire universe. He is the ordinary one, the all-sufficient one, the self-dependent king. Listen to Isaiah when he speaks. The government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. He will reign on David's throne, over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice. And now he says, his righteousness from time on and forever. Dear one in Christ, the king is in our city. 
Today the king is in our villages. The king is in our town. He is on his throne and reigns as a victorious Christ and the king of the universe. Indeed, blessings abound wherever he reigns. Prisoners leave to lose his chains. The weary will always find rest and all the sons of want are blessed. Where he, the king, displays his healing powers, death and curse are no more. In him, the tribes of Adam boast. Blessings then abound for their father's loss. There is no doubt that our generation is experiencing one of the difficult times in history. And I believe COVID-19 will go down in history. We are experiencing fear and deaths. We are seeing leaders and royals, the rich and the poor, giving up. We have heard suicides, even by political figures. We have heard of great nations and countries of our times suffering the most. But I have a good news for you. The royal priest and prophet king is in town. He is entering our cities and villages. Today, as we celebrate Jesus' entry to Jerusalem, may I say to you, he is in your neighborhood. I am talking about the victorious Christ, the king of the universe. He comes as a victor and conqueror of death. Now listen to those who mock him, to those who spit on him, to those who killed him. And after three days, he told them he will rise again. He comes as our Hosanna, the one who saves us now. Jesus is the king priest. Jesus is a prophet king. Do you believe this? Let him be your Lord. Let him be your savior. Let me also share with you an exposition on Philippians 2, 5, 11, and Isaiah 54, 9, readings selected for the day. For the two, the basic import is that there is always a glorious ending when we live in obedience to God's will and plan for our lives. Such is a light that the Old Testament reading, Isaiah 50, an epistle, Philippians 2, sheds on our conversation. Jesus, in going to Jerusalem, had the self-understanding that the Messiah was to suffer, the Messiah was to die for human sin. The Messiah will be glorified after his suffering. His suffering and death ahead of him in Jerusalem defines his messianic mission. It was a mass suffer and a mass fulfilled mission. Nothing could stop him from the hour of his destiny, the cross and the resurrection. To this, Isaiah puts it rightly. He describes the Messiah's humiliation and suffering by saying, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide myself, my face from mocking and spitting. Isaiah 50, verse 6. Beloved, Jesus went through this humiliation, even though he's God. And Philippians 2 has this to say about him. Let us have this attitude of Jesus with us, who being in the very nature of God, made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Christ Jesus 
in obedience to his father, embraced humiliation and suffering in the hands of his enemies. The chief priests, the scribes, the Roman Gentiles, and finally, the grave. These are necessary parts of his humiliation. But these also are the path of his glorification. Paul says, having fulfilled his obedience through suffering and obedience to the end, even in death, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and on the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the prophet king, is the Messiah, the one who is lifted up by our Lord over heaven, over earth, and under the earth. His, he is a victorious Christ, and every knee shall bow before him. And I believe the COVID-19 the sinner, the unbelieving, when will come to Jesus, will bow before him. Jesus is Lord. He brings salvation. Why not trust him? Trust him now and submit your situations to him. For he is a prophet king and the Messiah who comes to redeem us. Dear one, don't give up on God and yourself. There is always a glorious end to those who walk and live in obedience to God, even in the face of suffering and humiliation. Our situation today, where we find ourselves in isolation, where we could not meet together and worship, remember, Jesus says, after three days, he will rise again. Christ the Lord, Christ the King, is with us. Christ the Savior is with us. Our prophet King still reigns, and he holds the whole world into his, in his hands. His blessings abound wherever he reigns, and the prisoner will always have peace and blessing. The prisoner will be free. Where he displays his powers, there is no more death. There is no more sin. There is no more destruction. Our situation today will end because Jesus, the king, is in our neighborhood and he reigns. I encourage you to trust in him. As you sing Hosanna to him, give yourself to Jesus. For the Lord is here with us. Amen. We end as we sing the hymn 837. The hymn 837. 837.
Let us pray. God our Savior, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as a Messiah to suffer and die, even as we raise our palms before you as a sign of victory, grant that we may carry on in our hearts, ever hail him as king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Grant that with all the faithful ones, may we enter into the new Jerusalem in triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Now, beloved in Christ, may the God of peace be with you. May the God who came to redeem and to restore us, the king, prophet, priest, be with you. Even at this moment in our isolation, may his presence in the power of the Holy Spirit comfort and strengthen us. And may he give us a grace to keep the faith and rejoice in his salvation now and forevermore. Amen.